Hi there, so today we're going to improve on our cableway system from the previous video. Let's go. So we are back in Unreal in our cableway system that we have built in the previous video. You can go check it out if you missed it. So this cableway system was working fine, but it was a little bit lacking in some features. So first we are going to go over the different improvements that we are going to do in this video. The first improvement is to have the possibility to add uh, spline points that are not station points. By that I mean that currently when we add a, a target point to be on the spline, it will always be a station, so our cable car will always stop at it, but we want to be able to place uh, target points to modify the path of our cableway without the car stopping at them. So that's the, the purpose of this feature. The next feature we are going to build is to add uh, support for more than two stations and at the same time we are going to add another platform on our cableway car so that when we uh, step onto one we are going to go to the next station and when we step on the other we are going to go to the previous station so that the player can choose between going to the next station or the previous station uh, depending on the, the platform that he steps on. And the last feature will be to automatically generate the cable because now our cable we path will be curved so it will be a struggle to manually place the cable and curve it manually. So we're going to build a system to generate it automatically uh, using the, the spline component. First let's clean up our scene. We're going to remove all the existing system we're going to keep this station here we can remove the cable so this one let's say that it's going to be the second station and we are going to build the third next to it There we go, so we are going to take this target point and we are going to make a new one at the middle, there, and let's take all of those assets and let's move them up a bit. And we're going to make a third one over there. So that's going to be our path from the first to the second one and the third with a middle target point there. So let's build the first feature which is to handle uh, intermediary target point. For that we are going to go to our cableway blueprint. And the first thing that we are going to do is to modify this station variable because now we need to store spline points and this will be an array of target point reference. There we go. We want an array and we're going to replace the use of this station variable by our new spline points variable. This spline point variable will contain um, all the target points, be it stations or intermediary target points. And we're going to turn this stations variable into a map that goes from integer to integer. Yeah, it's going to break some things. But why are we going to do that? Because this variable now will be used to map a station a stations rather to spline points and it will map the index of the station to the index of the spline points in the in the spline components because now there are going to be a spline point that will not be station that's why we need uh, this mapping and we're going to build a new function 
that will be called get station spline point and it will map the index of the station to the index of the spline point it will take the station index an integer and it returns a spline point index and this very simple we just need to take this new variable and call the find method and we give as an input the station index and we return the spline point index and we're going to make this function a pure function like the others so we get an error on the compile this is because we have changed the type of the, the variable so we are going to remove this length and this variable and we're going to call the same method but for our new variable and the last thing that we need to do is to modify the get distance at station method because now um, the station index does not directly map to the spline point we need to use our new method to get the, the real spline point index for this uh, station index. And that's pretty much it for this feature. Now it should work. We're going to test all the, the features at the end uh, of the, the video. Now we can continue to our second feature, which is to handle uh, more than two stations. We're going to go back to our cable we call blueprint. And the first thing that we are going to do is to add a second gray platform there so that the one on the left will be to go to the previous station and the one on the right will be used to go to the next station. So we are going to use this one uh, to go to the next station. So let's rename next next station. And we're going to attach the box to the mesh. And we are also going to call it box next station. And we're going to move it on the right like so. And we're going to duplicate it. This one for the previous station. And same for the box. And we're going to attach it to the previous mesh and we're going to move the mesh on the left there we go now we need to modify our two next station because we don't want to loop anymore because to go to the previous station we are going to use another method so in this case we just want to remove this one and we just want to start moving to the next station only if we are not at the last station. And we need a new method which is called to previous station. And it will be a bit like this one, so we can take it and copy most of it. We could uh, refactor it to make a common one, but let's keep it simple. And we just need to change this condition there. And we here we are going to check if this current station is equal to zero. And if it is not, it means that we are not at the first station. So we can go to the previous station. And we just need to change this one into a decrement. And the start moving does not change. So that's it for our new method. We just need to go to the event graph and call our new method 
when we overlap with the previous station box this one there and we just need to call the to previous station method and that's it for this feature now we can build the last feature which is to automatically generate the cable mesh to follow the, the spline that is generated on the cableway for that we are going to go back to our cableway blueprint and to our initialize spline method and here once the, the spline is generated we are going to call a new method which will build the mesh automatically first let's see how this function will work if we take a schema let's say that this is our spline and uh, the green thing is the the cable the cable mesh so what we are going to do is generate cable meshes along the spline like that so that it covers all the length of the spline to know how many cable meshes we are going to generate along the spline we need to take the total length of the spline and divide it by the length of the cable mesh along the axis that follows the spline so for example for this cable mesh if the axis that goes from here to here like that is the x-axis we are just going to take the, the length of the mesh on the x-axis so in this example we are going to generate the meshes until it reaches the total length and if the last cable mesh finish after the spline end we are going to apply a floor method so that we generate only the lower bound number of meshes so in this case we are not going to generate it and it will be like that and if we want to generate uh, the last meshes we need to extend the spline so that the the space left is greater or equal to the length of the, the cable mesh so let's apply that first we are going to create a variable called section length so this will be the cable length along the generated axis so we are going to set it and we're going to create another one called base length and we're going to use it and multiply it by the actor scale so we are going to multiply it by the axis we are going to generate the cable mesh on in our case it will be the x-axis because if we go back to our assets and take this one there we go you can see that if we show the pivot we want to generate the meshes along this axis and as you can see it's the red one so it's the x one it's indicated here on the bottom left so we are going to generate our mesh along the x-axis that's why we are going to take the x value from the actor scale and multiply it by the base length and this result we are going to output it in the section length so as a result we are only going to use the section length in the rest of the function so now we can loop and uh, the number of loop will be the number of cable meshes we are going to generate as I said in the schema the number of cable meshes will be the um, total cable length divided by the section length so to get the spline length I just need to call a method on the spline component and divide it by the section length And as I said also at the end of the schema explanation, we are going to apply the floor to take the lower bound. And this will be the last index. So now for each cable meshes to generate, 
we are going to add oops sorry add the spline mesh component so as the description is telling over there uh, this one creates um, a new component that will be attached to this actor the one we are interested in is the setting mesh we are going to take our cable our cable weight cable um, so as you can see there is two cable weight cable meshes uh, in the first part of this tutorial I've used this one but I've made another one and the only thing that changes is I've removed the faces on the edge of the, the cable because when the cable meshes will be chained if the faces over there it will create uh, some glitches on the, the lighting and it, it will create uh, fake shadows so when we are chaining meshes using this method it's better to remove the faces at the edge so let's continue uh, we have chosen the mesh we can also choose the forward axis so that's the axis we are generating our cable mesh by so as I've said earlier we are using the x-axis because of the x-axis of the cable mesh and we are good for this node it should generate the, the right meshes now that the spline mesh is generated we need to decide on the start location and the end location of the mesh as well as the tangent at the start and at the end the tangent are going to decide the rotation uh, at the start and at the end of each cable mesh so we are going to compute them so that all the, the cable mesh are chained in a seamless way let's call the set start and end so as you can see we can set the start position the start tangent and the end position and the end tangent so to set those values we need to take the spline and call the get location at a long spline we keep the local coordinate space so we can put that in the start position uh, so to get the distance we just need to take the index subtract it by one and multiply this value by the section length so it should convert it there we go and there is one thing also we need to start at the first index because otherwise it will have been 0 minus 1 and it will have been uh, minus 1 so we would the first point will be useless because it will go from uh, 0 to 0 so why are we doing that um, let's take the schema for the start position we take the current index so let's say it starts with one we take the section length and we say that the start position will be the current index minus one so zero multiplied by the section length so the first point will be here because it will be equal to zero and for the end position we are going to do the same thing but without subtracting the index by one so it will be one multiplied by the section length so it will be here and as we loop the index will go from one to two and we'll do the same thing the start position for the second uh, cable mesh will be one multiplied by the section length so it will be here and uh, the end position will be two multiplied by the section length so it's going to be here and we're going to loop on that until the end so that's for the location we can do the same thing for the, the tangent we just need to call the tangent along spline at distance and we're going to take the same distance and output it in the start tangent so for the end position and tangent it will be exactly the same except that we do not subtract by one 
and we can output those in the set start and end. And that's it for this function. The cable should be automatically generated. We just need to call this method during the spline initialization. Uh, we need to wait that the spline is generated, so we are going to call it just over here. And now we can test. Let's take our cable away and place it in the level as well as the cable we car. There we go. We can place it anywhere because as I said in the in the last tutorial, the, um, the location is set at begin play. We just need to set the reference of the cable way. We are going to start at the station zero. For the cable way, we first need to reference all of our spline points. So those will be the four target points that I've placed in the level already. There, 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 and there. Going back to the cable way, the first spline point will be the first target point. And the same for the rest. And now we need to map our stations to our target points. So. The first station will be this one, the second one will be this one, and the third one will be this one. We are going to start with the, the last one, because as we add new elements, you can see that uh, it complains because the, the default key is zero, so if there is already an element with the, the zero key, we can't add a new one. So we are going to start with the last one with the index 2, to so our last station will take the last target point and it is the third one so our last station will take the last target point so it is the target point with the index 3 the second station will take the target point with the index 2 and the first station is going to take the target points with the index 0 uh, because the target point left is index 1 and we are not using it for the station but just to curve the spline here in the middle so we can already start the game and see what we've got so we can see that there is already a problem because there is no cable generated that is because if we go back to our cable way and to the build cable you can see that the base length is not set. So usually we get this value from the, the length of the mesh that we use. So here for the cable we cable, you can see here on the top left that the length on the x-axis is 1990. So we can start testing with this value. But as you will see, there is already Two problems. First, the cable is generated not where we want it to be but here and also the cable is not really smooth. You can see that there are our tra transition at the location of the spline points. When you left the game you can see that there is those warning messages and it's complaining that we are attaching our cable meshes to something which is not static but our cable meshes are static so to fix that we can go back to our build cable function click on the add spline mesh component node and here on the mobility we can set it to movable because our spline is attached to something that is movable so it needs to be movable as well so now when we start the game, you can see that the uh, location is correct. And to solve the second issue, we just need to take a base length uh, that is smaller than the real base length of the mesh. So I've made some tests and 100 is fine here. 
and as you can see we got a way better result compared to the first the only problem is here where the cable angle is not really right for us so to solve this issue we can go here and we can add a new target point here this will correct the rotation of the mesh so we need to modify our data on the cable wave we are going to add a new spline point and the spline point that we have just added will be the third one so it will be at index 2 so the first and the second here at index 0 and 1 are correct but starting from here we need to take a new target point then the next one and the next one and we also need to change our mapping because now station 1 will be at the spline point with index 3 and the last station will be with index 4 so now if we start the game we can see that the cable generation is better so let's test the other features the thing that we need to test is that when we are stepping on the right platform there we need to go directly to the first station and not stop at the intermediary target point so let's see if it's working so it seems to be working and the last feature we need to test is when we step on the left platform we need to go back to the preview station and it seems to be working as well and if we step on the left platform when we are at the first station it does nothing so that's it for this tutorial on the second part of our cableway system like always you can thumbs up subscribe and share if you enjoyed the video you can also comment if you have any suggestion of something you would like to see uh, I will not make a video out of it for sure, but it's always nice to have an overview. And uh, that's it for me, so see you another time, bye.